What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm super excited because I finally got my hands on the all new ASRock Desk Mini A300. ASRock was kind enough to send this over. Unfortunately, I have no information on the official release date in the US or the final price. Rumor on the street is this will be going for $150 to $175. This is a bare bones kit that will support the Ryzen second generation APUs and hopefully it'll be updated for the third generation when or if they're released later this year. As for a US release date, supposedly late March, but you gotta take all of this with a grain of salt because I don't have the official information. I wasn't able to obtain it. Recently, I did a review on another desk mini from ASRock, but that one was the H310. It supports 8th generation Intel CPUs. But in my opinion, the A300 is on a whole nother level because it supports those 2nd generation Ryzen APUs, like the 200GE, the 2200G, and the 2400G. These are bare bone kits, so you will have to supply your own CPU, RAM, and storage, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it if you want small form factor. This uses a 5x5 five five inch STX motherboard, and the whole unit itself is the same exact size as the power supply and my main PC. Let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. I've been dying to get my hands on one, mainly just for the STX motherboard in here. I believe they're using the A320 chipset, but I'm not exactly sure as of unboxing this. As you can see, these things are pretty tiny. Now it does come with an external power supply, so that's gonna add a little extra to it, but if that's under the desk, I really don't count that as PC size. I will be going over the full specs in just a second, but I wanted to see what else came in this package. I believe this is the optional CPU cooler that ASRock has. Now, I'm not sure if these are going to come in every single kit. They might offer a few different variants of the A300. Just by looking at it, I can tell you right now that the 2400G is going to thermal throttle with this, even at the stock clocks. I'm going to be going with the 2400G in this build, so I probably won't use this cooler. They also provide you with the power supply and these SATA adapters because it does have enough room inside of this little case for two 2.5 inch SSDs or mechanical hard drives. We also get a couple extra screws, power cable for the power brick, and the power supply itself. It's 19 volts at 6.3 amps, so it's around 120 watts. Let's go ahead and take a look at the A300, then I'm going to do a quick assembly. The desk minis can be used horizontally or vertically. I kind of like the vertical look a lot better. As for external I.O., we have a 3.5mm audio jack out, one USB 3.0 port, USB Type-C, and a 3.5mm microphone jack in. Around back, we have our power input, display port, full-size HDMI, VGA, one USB 3.0, one USB 2.0, and gigabit Ethernet. They do sell extra adapters like a serial port for the back or two extra USBs on the side of the unit. Now you will have to buy those separately, but they're not that expensive. Personally, I wish they would have added one more USB port, but I have been able to get by with just three. Let's go ahead and get this thing apart. Now I could live without the case. The main thing I'm interested in is this STX motherboard that supports those second generation Ryzen CPUs. Hopefully they just start selling the motherboard and power supply by itself. It would bring the cost down. I'm not sure by how much, but if they do, I'm definitely just going to pick up a motherboard. This little thing would be great for all kinds of projects. So it's just four screws. It's going to slide out. It's got some little sliders in there. And here we are. The A300M STX. Check out the little heat sink on the VRM up here. As you can see, this supports SODEM RAM or laptop RAM, and with these APUs, you really want some fast RAM. So luckily, inside of the BIOS, you can do up to 4,000 megahertz as long as your RAM will support it. I do want to pull this board off just to see how small it is without the case connected to it. And on the bottom, there's actually another M.2 slot, so you can add two M.2 SSDs, an M.2 Wi-Fi module, and two 2.5-inch drives. So you definitely could add a ton of storage to this little device. So here's a Raspberry Pi 3A+. I just kind of wanted to do a little bit of a size comparison here. Obviously, it's much bigger than the Pi, but we are able to push a lot more power out of this. Since this is a bare bones unit, I'm going to have to add some RAM, storage, and my CPU. So for the RAM, I'm going to be going with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 Vengeance 2400 megahertz RAM. Now I have successfully overclocked this in another system to 3000 megahertz, and I know it's going to work fine in this one. If you can buy faster RAM out of the gate, definitely do it because these APUs really need it. 
For storage, I'm going to be going with a 240 gigabyte SSD. Now, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to go with this PNY or a silicon power. I'll decide that when I get everything put together. And for the CPU, I'm going to be going with the Ryzen 5 2400G quad core, eight threads. We have Vega 11 graphics. I love these little APUs. Now, like I mentioned, I don't think the included heatsink is going to do much for this 2400G. And I don't think that the stock Wraith cooler that comes with these APUs is going to fit. Luckily, I have a Noctua NH-L9A AM4 low profile cooler, and I think it's going to fit in here perfectly. It's nice and quiet, and it definitely keeps these APUs quite cool. The ASRock heatsink will get you by in a pinch, and it'll probably work fine for the 2200G, and it'll definitely work perfectly for a 200GE or the 240GE. But for the 2400G, I don't think it's going to be able to sustain its max boost clock for long with this heatsink. So I just went ahead and assembled everything. The NHL9A fits perfectly on this little board and it actually clears everything when you slide it back into the case. So I think this is a perfect cooler for a setup like this. I also installed a single 2.5 inch SSD on the back. I went with the silicon power version because I got a few of these laying around. Before I get into any testing, I did want to put my theory to the test. So I installed the stock cooler and ran one single Cinebench R15 run and we hit 75 degrees Celsius by the end. And with the NH L9A, we hit 66 degrees Celsius. And this was all reassembled with both of them inside of the case. So you'll definitely run into thermal throttling with the stock ASRock cooler. And as for noise, the little fan on the stock cooler definitely ramps up. And the NH L9A, you can hardly hear it. All right, so I've installed Windows 10 Pro. I've updated all the drivers. I was able to overclock the RAM to 3000 megahertz in the BIOS. And there's also overclock settings for the CPU and the GPU, but none of it's sticking. The chipset we're using here just really isn't overclockable, but you never know. Maybe down the road, ASRock will put out an update for this and allow us to overclock. Got my fingers crossed. So the first thing I did was run a Cinebench R15. Best score I could get out of this was a 798, which really isn't bad. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I just did a review on the Desk Mini 310 with an i3-8100, and that unit actually scored a 568, but remember, that's a quad-core CPU with four threads. What we're working with here, the 2400G is a quad-core with eight threads, so that will help out. Next on the list is Geekbench. Single core, 4121, multi-core, 11,456. It's not bad, but I expected the multi-core to be a little higher on the 2400G. The other desk mini that I recently did a review on with the i3 actually beat this out in single and multi-core. But what the 2400G lacks in CPU performance, it does make it up in GPU performance. And 3 Mark Night Raid 1.0 scored a 10,889. And in Time Spy 1.0, we scored a 1,105. Not bad at all for integrated graphics. In Blender, on CPU alone, using the BMW benchmark, we actually rendered this out in 2 minutes 30 seconds. The Desk Mini 310 with the 8100 did this in 3 minutes and 10 seconds, so those 4 extra threads with the 2400G are definitely helping out here. I usually throw in some 4K video playback using Plex or Kodi, but I'm not going to do it in this video because the 2400G is more than capable of doing 4K video at 60fps. Instead, I'm going to move right into some PC game testing. First up, Apex Legends 1080p all low settings. Now it is pretty playable, I'd rather play this at 60, so you might want to drop down to 720p, especially if there's a lot of explosions going on. You can see it drops down to around 14, but the average is 41. I also wanted to show off the 720p performance of Apex Legends, so this is 720p, all low settings, we're getting an average of around 68, which is really good. It is playable on a system like this at 720p. And by the way, yes, you will see screen tearing in each one of these games that I'm testing, and that's because I don't have desync on. 
I recommend turning it on for personal use, but I wanted to see how high the FPS would go in each of these games. CSGO, 1080p, medium settings, you'll have no trouble playing this game. Remember, just turn V-Sync on, it'll lock it at 60, and it'll be a great experience on the 2400G. Rocket League, 1080p, all low settings. Now you could fiddle around with the settings and probably do medium 60 FPS, but I wanted to see how high we could go and we're getting an average of 116. Grand Theft Auto 5, 720p, normal settings, we're getting an average of 60. Now if you take this and turn it up to 1080p and turn V-Sync to half, you can do 30 FPS all day at 1080p. But like I mentioned in the last game, I wanted to see how high we could go. And it looks like 60 to 59 is going to be the average here. This one actually surprised me. This is Project Cars 2, 1080p, all low settings. We're getting an average of 64 FPS. It's perfectly playable like this. Now, I know a lot of people want to go to that high detail, but if this is what you have, you could definitely have a great time playing Project Cars 2 on something like this. I also tested PUBG, average of 41 at 720p, low, maximum 68, minimum 27. Not a great experience, but you could get by playing it. Same thing with Metro Exodus, 720p, low settings, average 32, maximum 53, but the minimum is 11. In some spots, it's going to struggle. So overall, the A300 is an awesome little device. I'm going to leave links to ASRock's website in the description. I'm also going to leave some placeholder links for Amazon and Newegg in case these become available in the next few days. You can pick one up. If you're interested in seeing the performance with a 2200G or a 200GE, just let me know in the comments. I have both of those CPUs, and I don't mind making a couple more videos on this unit. As for emulation performance, I will have a dedicated video coming up very soon, so keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date. By the way, I did test the stock Wraith cooler that comes with the 22 and the 2400G. Unfortunately, as you can see here, it's just not going to fit inside of the case when it's fully assembled, but it does fit the motherboard quite well, and I also have the RAM installed on the other side. It doesn't hit it at all. So if you want to leave this open air until you can afford a low-profile AM4 cooler, you could definitely do so. For a PC that's the same size as an ATX power supply, I think this is an awesome little machine. I do a lot of reviews on mini PCs, and I gotta say, this is one of my favorite ones, except for the i7 Bean Canyon NUC. So far, I'm having a blast with the A300. As soon as I get the final word on price and release date, I will leave it in the description. I'm also gonna pin a comment and leave it in my community tab, just so everybody knows. I'm also going to be leaving placeholder links in the description along with some other stuff that I used in this video. Really appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I got a lot more coming on the A300. And like always, thanks for watching.